you're doing well. I just want to talk to you real quick about dreams. Uh, plenty of times cited in the Bible where the Lord comes to his children in dreams. So I used to have these dreams about snakes all the time. And before I quit smoking, it was all the way down to the, that guy. I went to work one day and I was working with Pastor Milton, actually, uh, down at Trinity. And I said, man, I said, Herman. You know, even Herman, right? <laughs> I said, I keep having this dream. It's this little bitty snake. I says, and he's wounded right behind his head. I says, I keep trying to put a Band-Aid on this on his snake. I said, what do you think that means, man? I says, but I keep having it. He, he said, well, George, says, you ever dream about snakes before? I said, oh, man. So I used to dream about snakes all the time, you know. But the way it all spun up to me in my mind because they started going away. And now all I had left was this one dream that I kept dreaming over and over about this little snake. It wasn't a big snake no more. It was a little snake. And it was wounded, right? It was, but I kept trying to fix it. I said, yeah. And I, I explained the situation to him. So I figured out that that one was the smoking. You know, because I'd got rid of the the wandering eyes. I'd gotten rid of the, the alcohol. So that little snake that was wounded was the smoking, as, as far as I could see and understand, because the Lord had wanted me to quit smoking. He'd asked me to quit smoking, and I tried three or four times, so, so he was wounded, but I just wouldn't let, I wouldn't let go of him. Finally, I, I, could, I admitted that I couldn't let go of him, and the Lord took it, and I haven't had no dreams about snakes since. True story. But anyways, the last two nights, I've had dreams about snakes. Now, the one last night was this old... Uh, like dark looking snake, big old snake, come got right in my face, you know, had kind of a high hump on his head, well by the end of the, and then, and then I started doing like some, I don't know, foul, uh, foul sexual stuff or whatever, you know, and then anyways, so I, I met this being, and, and I felt like the, the, the whole message was, because what had happened is it turned from like this dark, gray, dingy, uh, atmosphere, and I was doing foul things of this bright, sunshiny, uh, beautiful atmosphere. And the message was stay, stay in the light, you know, because it's really easy to get off in the darkness. And that's the way I took it, and that's the way I understood it. That's not the the wisdom I lost last night either, by the way. The night before I left, that that's a different dream, or that's that was something different. But so so it was easy to get that message, stay in the light, right? But that's the first time I dreamed about snakes since. So anyways, last night I had this dream about this snake again. Now these are big snakes I'm dealing with. We're talking two hands just to get around its head and hold. These things are freaking huge. They're big. So I'm like, what is up with these snakes? And I was just sitting here thinking about it on my way to work. I thought, you know, since, since I got ordained down there at the church, I think the Lord's just telling me, be careful, right? Because they... There's a lot of a lot of ways to get lost on this path. And, you know, the snakes are going to come after me. You know, um, to just be careful. Stay in the light. Um, don't get twisted up no way. And, you know, watch my mouth. Watch my thinking. Keep people's privacy. Don't talk. Be a better listener. I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm guessing. So... You know, do you have dreams? Do you, like, self-interpret your dreams? Just keep in mind that, th that there's many, many, many examples that the Lord comes to His children in dreams throughout the Bible. So, um, anyways, it's worth thinking about. Hey, I love you. Jesus loves you. It's uh, been a long video. Uh, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you soon, all right? It's George. I'm out. Bye. Have a great day.